today we see that the president of the Czech Republic has uh, appointed another prime minister. What do we know about Petra Fiala? Well, Petra Fiala is, is well-known, experienced Czech politician. He was already a member of one of uh, the former governments and he chairman, chairperson of uh, the Czech, I would say, conservative party, which uh, leads the coalition, which uh, uh, made an agreement that they would like to uh, govern the country. They are, there are five uh, movements and parties within the coalition. I would say on the right, the most conservative is the party of uh, the appointed Prime Minister Petr Fiala, ODS. Then uh, we have a movement which is composed mainly of, of mayors and independents. Then we have uh, a smaller liberal party, top zero nine. And uh, we have uh, pirates there, although they have only four members of uh, the parliament. Is this a stable coalition? Uh, well, it remains to be seen. Well, the, the logic behind cementing this coalition was to, to bring a change to the Czech Republic to topple the populist Prime Minister Andrei Babish. And of course, there may be some differences uh, between conservatives and liberals within the coalition. But I think that, that the bottom line is that, that they want to be responsible and uh, bring the changes which uh, will uh, move the Czech Republic again into the family of normal, regular European countries. Because uh, with a populist prime minister and populist president, it was not the case. Viala is uh, party is part of the ECR group, and we've seen well, we've seen to a certain extent in all parties uh, concern about the rule of law in Europe, and uh, some countries more than others. But at the moment, one of the biggest concerns is Poland, where we see the independence of the judiciary uh, very much under attack. Uh, he is part of this group. Does he share that perspective? Um, uh, uh, do you think that he will stand by his uh, Polish colleagues and the ECR group, or, or will he take a different position that defends the rule of law? Well, Petr Fiala seems to be, uh, I would say, realistic uh, person and uh, someone with, with good intentions. And uh, I think that, that he, his view on the situation in Poland and in Hungary is reasonable as he is himself. But there is a certain legacy in the party of the former chairman Václav Klaus, who was prime minister and president, and he was strongly against the Euro, then against the European mm -hmm. Union, and so on. And it, it still hangs over the party. And there is still a quite, uh, I would say, strong part in the party which is represented also by MEPs who are part of the ECR group, who uh, think that uh, what happens in Hungary and Poland is just a case for the two countries and it has nothing to do with the European values, rule of law and, and so on. I think that, that, that at, le at least I hope that, that Mr. Fiala will will uh, gather strands to, to trans transform the party 
along the lines of regular European right uh, parties on the right, like uh, CDU in Germany, for example. And uh, they will clearly uh, stay behind those who, who would like to see all member states to observe to the rule of law and other commitments. So I think that that also when Mr. Fiala will meet his counterparts within the European Council, that uh, it reinforces him and it it helps to shape his views on that on on that issue. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. Uh... The recent fine uh, applied by the European Court of Justice concerning the, the coal mine uh, in Poland that is on the border with the Czech Republic, has that, that affected the, the Czech perspective? Well, um, I, I don't think so. It's, it's, a, it's a huge bilateral problem. And uh, the European Court decided how we decided that the Polish side should close up the, 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 <clears throat> the place. And when it did not happen, it was, uh, the Polish side was fine. But I think that those who think that, that Visegrad and, uh, and uh, the national governments uh, are untouchable, they are not affected by the, the bilateral dispute on the mine. And those who think that the rule of law should apply everywhere, especially within the EU, mm -hmm. uh, they are not affected either. So I think that also Mr. Fiala's party, although the biggest one is just one party, one part of the five members coalition, and I think that the rest of the coalition uh, has, has the same view that the rule of law should apply. So here there would be a, a change uh, of the Czech position, official governmental position towards that, I hope, because uh, departing Prime Minister Babiš uh, teamed up with, uh, with uh, Viktor Orban and, and uh, Polish government in order to fight anything progressive within the EU, be it Green Deal or other issues. Um, so, uh, Peter, I know you very well from your time as an MEP, and in particular, you led a report, a report that was a joint report, actually, by two other of the main political groupings in the parliament uh, on tax rate, all those issues that came out of Lux Lakes, the Panama Papers. And so you're quite an authority on all of those issues. And uh, I think there's been, a lot has happened uh, in the recent uh, year. And I, I'm just wondering, what do you think about those developments? And also, we know that uh, well, one of the most prominent uh, politicians who was mentioned in the most recent leak, the Pandora uh, Papers, uh, was uh, Andre Babish. Is that is there anything happening about that? Will there be any process to look into what happened? But but firstly, what do you think of the the tax developments of late? Well, I think that there's been a huge change, not only in the atmosphere, but in the in in the effort to to make the tax environment uh, uh, more. Uh, I would say uh, more justify or more just, and uh, we have the, the the talks or almost the decision by by OECD on minimum tax, corporate tax around the world, and th there is a huge effort in the EU to uh, eliminate. Uh, problems related to uh, tax avoidance and tax tax evasion. So 
thanks to the revelations by, by journalists, and there were many of them, uh, I think politicians realized also under the pressure of, of people that, that they must, they must uh, do something. And it was the European Parliament, uh, first of all, then the European Commission, and many of the member states. And of, of course, there are some member states who, who still do not have uh, their, their homeworks done. So they, they are, I would say, delaying the effort. But the, but the, the, the pressure is uh, enormous. And sooner or later, it will be the situation will be significantly improved. I'm sure. And on, uh, and on former Prime Minister Babish. Oh yeah. Well, what what I read in the press was a suspicion that that he uh, might have tried to avoid paying taxes in France. But uh, one uh, uh, should know all the details. And I think that the French authorities and the US authorities as well, because the US entity was involved, will, will investigate it all and they will, they will behave accordingly. Yeah. Perhaps, well, on the issue we started with, and that's that's Mr. Fiala's government or the new government. I think that there are there are a number of issues which make uh, life difficult for the new government. Not not only that they are coalition of five, because there is still the president of the Czech Republic, which. Uh, uh, he and his uh, uh, aides and collaborators, they, they behave unscrupulously and they do whatever they want, regardless of the constitutions and, and uh, how the head of state should behave. That's one problem. The other is public service because it's uh, after this government or during this government, it was very, very weakened. And a uh, number of people who were loyal to the prime minister were appointed and not on the basis of uh, their uh, qualifications and quality. So, and it's, it's very inefficient, the public service. So that's second issue. Then uh, uh, the only opposition in the parliament, in the House of Commons, will be either populists or extremist parties, which uh, is also difficult mm. because every, every uh, mistake by the government will be, will be uh, used by them. And in this respect, there is also broader dimension that uh, opposition in Hungary, for example, so in Poland, uh, they, they want to team up and build uh, broader, larger coalitions. And if the Czech Republic's coalition is success story, it will reinforce them, it will help them. But if not, on the contrary, it may very well reinforce the populists. Mm -hmm. So the, the responsibility is not only for the Czech Republic, but I would say uh, broader. And there is, there is quite, a, quite a legacy uh, after the, the departing, of the departing government. First of all, there are pressing issues like COVID pandemics, the energy prices, and not only energy, and uh, the huge budget deficit. So that's, these problems are enormous. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, there is a, uh, the, the overall state of the, of the country, because the, the departing government didn't do any modernization of the 
country. They were not able even to improve infrastructure, to Im improve highways, not to speak about new technologies and uh, using the uh, Green Deal to, to modernize the country, not at all. So this is another huge uh, challenge for the government. Uh, apart from COVID and budget deficit and energy energy crisis. So there are many tasks, many challenges, and it, won't, it will not be easy right at all for the five member coalition with uh, opposition composed by populist and extremist, I'm afraid. Peter thank you very much indeed.